My Line. Brought to you by Pure Digestible Crisco Oil, the light vegetable oil for delicious fried foods without that heavy, oily taste. Crisco Oil. And now, let's all play What's My Line? What's My Line panel. First, the delightful star of the hit play, Dinner at Eight on Broadway, Miss Arlene Francis. We always try to find bright new faces for you on What's My Line to mingle with us that have older faces. And tonight we have a bright new comedian, Dick Cabot. On my left is another lovely and charming lady, and one you've seen on the show before. If you were arrested in Oakland, California, falsely, you would sue Oakland. And that is our guest, <laughs> Miss Sue Oakland, right now. Columbia University, which I attend, and from which the man on my left was graduated, the college symbol is the lion. So it's only appropriate that he's been lionized from coast to coast. Bennett, sir. I wish you meant that, so. <laughs> well, this being the beginning of a new year, I would like to make sure that everybody who watches our show knows that the kidding that goes on between John Daly and myself is done in perfect friendship, and there is nothing bitter in it at all. In fact, I love every inch of bone in his head, and that's a lot of bone. John Charles Daly. Well, actually, Bennett and I have been close friends for many, many years. Of late, the doctors don't permit it. But I used to be very fond of fat heads. Fond of <laughs> That's the way to start a new year, I always say. Uh, Miss Sue and Dick Cabot, nice to have you with us. Arlene, why, you looking lovely as usual. We've been together for a great, great many years, and she's... Arlene is a most remarkable person. It seems to me that every year passing, you get lovelier. Not only just physically, but also in the wonderful kind of woman you are. Thank you. Pleasure. And as Bennett said, we just kid each other. Really, we're very good friends, and I hold him very dear, because he has been a good friend to me, not only in the sense that we're together every Sunday night, but he's been a good friend to me in many, many ways over a great many years, even if he is a fathead. Now, uh, we are going to have some interesting occupations to start things off tonight. We'll also have a famous mystery guest before my friends on the panel a little bit later in the program. Right now, let's meet our first contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? Lucille Born, right, ma'am? Alrighty. Is it uh, Miss or Mrs. Born? Miss Born. Miss Born, where are you from? Reading, Pennsylvania. Reading, Pennsylvania. Nice to have you with us. And you have some folks to give you moral support from Reading here tonight. May I present the panel, Miss Born? Now, will you join me over here, please? And we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. All right. Now, we can tell you that Miss Bond is salaried and deals in a service. And I believe in starting every year off well, so we'll start things off with Bennett, sir. Miss Warren, I presume you're no friend or relative of Bobby Clark, who used to sing that wonderful song, I'm Robert the Rue from Reading, PA. No, I'm None not. None at all. <laughs> has uh, has uh, the service that you perform, do you wear a very different kind of costume than the one that you're wearing tonight? 
very different than it would would uh, your question be cast in terms that you wear other than normal street clothes? Is that what you have? If you, uh, the point we're making is this is sort of a dinner evening dress. dress. Yeah. I would say you don't wear an evening dress for the service that you perform. Sometimes. You do? Well, then I have a no, I guess. Well, no, because you get a qualified, because sometimes. Sometimes you do. Yeah. Does the, you could wear a dress just like this in the service that you're performing. On occasion. Do you come into physical contact with the people for whom you are performing your service? Sometimes. Is there any entertainment value mixed up in the service you perform? <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't think so, Bennett. One doubt a night ago, Miss Francis. Do you work for a non-profit organization? Yes. Do you work for any arm of a government? Yes. Ours? National? <laughs> Do you work for city government? Yes. Are you appointed to office? Yes. Is there something judicial about your job? Yes. Uh, what's behind your source of the first yes. thing? We don't want to mislead you. Yes, you do, John. Yes, yeah, we do. That's two down a day to go. Dick Kevitt, no is the answer to judicial. Nothing judicial. Um, is this uh, something where I, a citizen of the city, you do this in that I might be likely to encounter often? You might. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, do the people who encounter it, uh, are they both men and women? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, are you enjoying being on the show tonight? <laughs> I yes. wanted to get another yes. Um, let's see. Is this, uh, hmm, this is difficult. Judicial, not oh, judicial, non-judicial. Um, is it possible that uh, I have encountered this service recently in my own city of New York? You may have. Mm. It's possible. We couldn't swear to it, Dick, but it's possible. Mm -hmm. um, is uh, there any kind of penalty involved in what you do to people? Sometimes. Sometimes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Does this uh, thing that you do result in costing them money? Sometimes. In other words, is the, do you fine people, or are you authorized in some sense to put them in a position where they can be fined? I could. Mm -hmm. Are you a lovely meter maid? <laughs> <laughs> Three down and seven to go, Sue. I've never seen a meter maid in an evening gown. Um, are you appointed by the mayor? Yes. Do you work for a city department? Yes. Um, do you um, work in an office? Sometimes. Sometimes. If I were going to um, have your service applied to me in some way, would I come to you, to, to your office, to consult with you, or have you give me some information that's either going to hurt or harm me or benefit me? You could. Sometimes, yeah. Everything is sometimes. <laughs> On again, off again. Um, are you in the office? You wouldn't be in the evening gown. That's the time that you would be in a kind of normal street dress. But if I were going to benefit from your service at another time, at night, say, you would be in an evening gown. Could be. Yes. All we're trying to convey there, it's not impossible that this would not be the estate in which he was at that moment in time dressed. Do you work in any sense for um, a department that has to do with correction or police or anything in that area? Mm, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Do you then work for the police department in some capacity? Mm, yes. Mm. Are you in some sense a police woman? Well, not a police woman, but in some sense. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> do you have to have special training for what you do? Yes. Uh, 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 something beyond a college degree? Mm, no. That's four down and six to go. We're looking for one word, Bennett. Do you have it? Are you close to the chief of police? Cousin. <laughs> said cousin three times <laughs> No, I don't think so. You've got it, Winnie. Now, what's the one word we're looking for? Detective? Detective. That's it. Oh. Detective. You both got it.
Miss Bond is a detective with the Reading, Pennsylvania Police Department, graduated from Pasadena City College in California, and has taken, continues to take courses. You still study sociology and psychology yes, as a plainclothes detective. And of course, Mr. Cabot and Mr. Surf are the kind of people that you worry about. <laughs> Work is principally juvenile. Ms. Vaughan, have you ever made a snatch while you had an evening down on? I mean, is that, have you ever, when you say you wear this, well, sometimes I do. Well, not directly, but in my work in surveillance, I sometimes would be. Gee, you can't be too careful. <laughs> <laughs> you this well, kind of lady that bugs the martini olive? Bugs the martini it? olive, yep. Why, surely. Now, that was fun. Hope you enjoyed being with us, Miss Bowen. Thanks Thank for being with us on What's My Life. <laughs> we'll have another contestant for you in just a moment after this word. And now to meet our second contestant, will you enter and sign in, please? John C. Hayden, H-A-Y-D-E-N. All right. Mr. Hayden, where are you from, sir? Chicago, Illinois. From Chicago. Yes, nice sir. to have you with us. Mr. Hayden, may I present our panel? Yes. Now, will you join me over here, sir? And we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. We can tell you that Mr. Hayden is self-employed and deals in a product, and we'll begin things with Arlene Francis. Is it a product I would enjoy using, Mr. Hayden? <laughs> I'm sure. Yes, if the circumstances were such that you had a wish to use this product, we are certainly sure that you would enjoy using it. <laughs> would I ever use it outside the home? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. uh, is it a product that might be considered in the game family? No, no. That's one down and nine to go. Dick Cabot. Hmm. Um, would it be unusual if Arlene and I were to use it at the same time? <laughs> well, it wouldn't be unusual if I may uh, have your permission. We can assume that it's certainly well within the purview of reason that the two of you might use it at the same time. This, Let's uh, get it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, I don't think it's necessarily germane. Uh-huh. Um, is this, uh, would it be unusual, uh, is it conceivable that I have used one of these? Yes, it is. <laughs> would, it, would, it, would, it, would, it, would it be eccentric of me to have one at this moment concealed in my clothing? <laughs> it wouldn't be, no, I can't think, I don't think it would be eccentric. It mm. would be possible, this would be presupposing a certain set of circumstances obtained. <laughs> But if, if the circumstances obtained, you would very possibly have it concealed in your book. <laughs> Two down a day to go, Sue. So well. Wonderful. Aren't you glad you asked? Uh, is this, then, more fun than utilitarian? No. It's utilitarian. Mm -hmm. That's three down and seven to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Hayden, has your product ever been, or is it at present, in your, when you use it, alive? No, sir. Four down and six to go, Miss Francis. Is it a product that comes in contact with the person when it is used? Yes. Is it a product that also could be found in the house? Yes. Is it hard rather than soft? Yes. Is it made of either wood or metal? No, ma'am. That makes it five down and five to go, Mr. Cabot. Hmm. Uh, before pursuing that, it was, is this product within the reach of the average income earner's income? Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is it made of something attractive? Yes. Uh, is it made of uh, a very pretty sort of uh, plastic? No. No. Be a little difficult if it was. That's six down and four to go. Sue up. Uh, it comes in contact with the body. That's been established. Yes, I think I asked if it came in contact with the person when with it was used. When mm -hmm. it was used. Is it in any way put on the person? No. That's seven down and three to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Hayden, is it put inside the person? The person knows it. It's not consumed in any way? Well, now, we have to take your first question as well, it was Well, when I put. said inside the person, if it's put inside the mouse, it's consumed, it's inside the person. 
Well, this will all come clear in a moment. <laughs> He's watching you like a horse. <laughs> Arlene? You keep turning those cards. Can it be put inside the mouth? Yes. Yes. Is it... <laughs> I was going to ask if it was anything in the tooth family, but what is there but teeth in the teeth family? <laughs> Does it have anything to do with the teeth? <laughs> no. No. The baby... Oh, I could have thrown them all over. Oh, wait, may, may we ask one more shot? question? Yeah. It's baby rattle. No, no. no. Is it made of glass? No. Teething ring? No. No, that's plastic. How about candy for dogs? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Hayden is the manufacturer of canine treats. This is a candy for dogs, and it's sold in, all over the place. Uh, it comes in different colors, and it's made of uh, fish and chlorophyll, which is a happy combination. But many people eat it, too, <laughs> that think they're dogs. Think they're dogs. <laughs> Sweet germ, chocolate flavor. There's really hard candies, and, they, and they, the dogs love them. But you see why, Bennett, we couldn't say person. That would have, it was put in the mouth, but not in a person's mouth, we well, hope. Would, if a person ate this candy, would he be hurt by it, Mr. Hayden? He'd love it. Love it? <laughs> <laughs> What's that? I have a nominee for you. <laughs> And he doesn't mean Bennett Surf. I know that, too. Thank you very much, Mr. Hayden. It was a joy to have you with us. Thank you. We'll meet tonight's mystery guest in just a moment, but first, this message. Ow. And now the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery challenger something to which I'm sure you're all very used, as is the panel. They have to be blindfolded. Are your blindfolds all in place, panel? Yes, sir. Good. Will you enter, Mystery Challenger, and sign in, please? As you know, one question at a time, in turn, moving clockwise. In this case, we'll begin with uh, Dick Cavett. Gee, that applause and scream was deafening. You're either very popular or nude. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, uh, a stab in the dark. Are you in the entertainment business? Are you in the entertainment mm -hmm. business? That's a yes. One down. Uh, but sorry, Miss Ofer. Are you in the category of very glamorous movie star? You have your answer, Miss Stewart. A definite yes. Bet it, sir. Just to get rid of a nasty suspicion I have, have you got a pair of the most famous legs in American theaterdom? Why, I, I, I would say yes, Bennett. <laughs> I don't know exactly, you know, I don't know what you're reaching for, but certainly... I'm not uh, reaching for anything. <laughs> oh, I'm... A great way to start the new year. Uh, Miss Francis. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're not reaching for them, but you're close to them. <laughs> <laughs> to follow through what Bennett is saying, there are several famous legs in motion pictures, and Claudette Colbert is certainly the owner of two. Uh, are you Claudette Colbert? Mm-hmm. That's one down and nine to go, Mr. Cabot. Uh, I think the legs gave it away from me. It's Walter Brennan. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I was going to say uh, Marlena Dietrich. That's two down and eight to go, Miss Oakland. Are we really for going for the wrong part of the body here? Um, I don't... <laughs> I don't feel competent to pass judgment. Uh, well, I'm, I have kind of a witch's instinct at this moment. Are you an Italian movie star? Yes? Yes. Is it Gina Lola Brigida? It certainly is. <laughs> Brava. Grazie. I must say, this is a very nice way to begin the new year. Um, what brings you? Are you just visiting here? Yes. 
Yes, this but business for uh, talk business. For talk business. I know this is an unhappy subject for you, but uh, we all regret very much the floods that took place in late November and early December in, yes. in Italy and did such grave damage. You going to uh, uh, stay with us for long, or are you going to be No, just home a few days, and then, and you go back then I go home. Go home again. again. Yeah. We should miss you when you go, I must say. <laughs> Bennett, I, did, did, did I do properly? Would you yes, say that... Uh, I, I, w I thought it... I was hoping that... Not that I don't think Miss Lala Bridget is wonderful, but... We've been seeing quite a bit of Claudette Colbert this week, and I thought she might be trying to put something over on us. And that's uh, <laughs> well, you're absolutely right in your judgment. Uh, by golly, uh, and pretty as a picture, too. That's what she is. We thank you very much for giving us New Year's Day, and may I say Happy New Year to you, and uh, may it be a wonderful and glorious and entirely satisfying year for and you. And Happy New Year to you, too. Well, thank you. points, I've got to give you uh, some congratulations, as I should tonight, and uh, we'll all be back after this word. And now may we meet a final contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? Surendra? Bahadur, right, sir? <laughs> With your permission, Channel, I'll admit we're very short of time, but uh, this is a rather special one. It's kind of trick, I'll tell you in, ahead of time. Mr. Bahadur is from India and is now resident in New York. With that, will you join me over here, sir? And we'll let the audience at home and the audience in the theater know exactly what your line is. Thank you. Memory that I'm remembering, I say this is kind of good fun. Uh, Mr. Bahadur is self-employed, deals in a product, and we'll begin with Sue Oakland. Is it unusual for an Indian to uh, deal in this product? Mm. That was it, wasn't it? Mm. No, I wouldn't think so. I don't think so. No, not for an Indian. That's one down and nine to go, Mr. Sir. Is this a product, Mr. Bahadur, that could be found in the ordinary home? Possibly. If it was in the home, would it be visible to people who came to call at that home? Not always. No, not likely, Bennett. It wouldn't be on display, if that's what you had in mind. Two down at eight to go, Ali. Mr. Bahadur, would it be found in one <coughs> room of the house rather than another? Not to the exclusion of any room, no. no. That's three down and seven to go, Mr. Cabot. I have an odd hunch. Would it, would it be unusual to give one of these as an anniversary present? Oh, yes. <laughs> it would be unusual. Uh, oh, yes, is the answer. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, it, is it possible that I have one of these uh, at home now? Oh, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. No, no, I don't. No. We have no reason to believe you have, although you probably will find I'm wrong. Uh -huh. Four down and six to go, Miss Oakland? Is it uh, something that has a useful purpose? Mm, it could have. I'm going to put all the cards over here. Like a scratcher. No. Guess it. Is it alive? No. I'm sorry to hear that. Mr. Bahadur sells kites. Oh. He has a kite shop. Go fly a kite shop. It's a go fly a kite shop on East 80th Street. So you just go fly a kite anything you want it. He, and they come in all sizes, and he has a lot of fun. Of course, they do it a lot in India. We thank, thank you a lot thank for you joining us. Nice to have you with us. time have nothing actually just enough time for all of us to say happy new year and yes. good night early good night my dear happy new year one to you too my thank you and sue happy new year happy new year and happy new year dear Ben. make it good everybody and you too john yeah, thank you and happy new year to all of you and thanks for being with us on what's my life
with Francis Gown is from Bonwood Teller, Miss Oakland's from Chester Weinberg. This is Johnny Olson speaking for What's My Line. Tonight's program was pre-recorded.